Hey, and welcome to Can We Play Already, uh, where we are streaming some amazing Dungeons & Dragons tonight. Uh, this is our seventh and season finale episode of The Heroes of Valtos Crossing. So uh, things have been pretty exciting. Um, we're going to take a brief break after this episode for a while and come back with another season shortly. But uh, for now, let's go around and introduce ourselves one last time for a little while. Uh, Jason, go ahead. Hello, I'm Jace. Uh, I'm playing Tengil, an Aarakocra Divine Soul Sorcerer. Uh, super excited about this uh, season so far. It's been really great and excited for season two and this finale. Hey, I'm Brianna. I play Kanaima, our tabaxi uh, rogue, swashbuckling pirate, you know, I dabble. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I'm Josh. I play Andrew Goodbarrel, our halfling uh, cleric with the life domain. Um, I don't know. She's pretty sad that the person to my left has passed away uh, recently, um, <laughs> but uh, is doing fine considering, I guess. Hi, I'm Dad. <laughs> <laughs> but you can call me. You can call me John, out of character, in character, dead or well tied. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a great intro. <laughs> nothing else. Oh nothing God. about this course. Perfect. Um, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> uh, as a recap, we had a very exciting episode last uh, last week. So. Um, we are on the look as a team for these different elemental stones that some kind of uh, maniacal dwarf is looking for because they apparently have great power that we haven't discovered or tapped into yet. Um, one of these stones was in the heart of a, volcan a volcano called Mountain Barra, and uh, we trekked into the ancient ruins of the old fire temple there where the flame song monks used to come, or the druids used to come and uh, worship the elements, essentially. Um, after going through the trials there, they were met with a giant uh, enraged fire elemental in the shape of a large bird. Um, anyways, they fought this fire bird, and as it's died and had his death knell kind of explosion, uh, well tied, a water bear druid sacrificed herself, jumping on it to stop it from exploding and killing Tangil. At the same time, uh, Kanaima expertly grabbed Andri and saved them from fire, which was great because Andri has a history of burns yeah. uh, that are pretty traumatic. And also, Kanaima has a history of not being able to save someone important from fire. So <laughs> it was a really big moment. Tangle's cool. He's alive. Um, he fought a bird. Uh, I don't know if that's messed up bird. with his own psyche. Um, it wasn't a real bird. It was just a fire elemental pretending to be one. I'm so glad Tangle's so smart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tangle's mapped this out. So uh, um, I just want to go over and make sure you all, we are playing with some hard mode rules here. So anyone who got down should have an injury um, what if or a what wound. If went down twice. Double injury. I think you do have two wounds. I, yeah, I do have, yeah. <laughs> um, do I get, like, extra injured? No, you just have two wounds you have to tend to. Cool. Um, JC went down. I did. So you get a wound. Uh, um, what, what would it be? I mean, we can roll on these things if you're all in the mood for it. Burn. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to remember what move the thing did that downed me because I want it to be related to that. That's a, a great... Um, no, that's a great idea, but also I, I don't know if we're going to look up the found footage on that right now mm -hmm. um, to, to actually get into it and see. Did you get down really early, or was it No, it was later? really close to the end. It was, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like right Then I assume around. it's probably like a burn or something. Wounds and injuries. I assume right? it's all burns. We fought a fire a burn. and they fired at all of us. No, and no. And clawed us with fiery talons. Okay, yeah, it was, I, was, I just remembered it was like one of its claw attacks or like mm. whatever, just like... Well, let's Nailing get shit. these DM dice of fate in here. Yeah. So Tangle. Yeah. Um, yeah, you have a wound on your back. Oh, no. So was it claws or was it? Yeah, yeah. OK, so I think that's like, I don't know if, it, if you'd like it to be like kind of a bludgeoning kind of thing. It was slashing damage or fire damage. So you can do whatever you like, but it got you in the back. Hmm. Anyways. Let's say. Slashing. Add that baby on. And it cauterized the wound for you because it was hot. Yeah. <laughs> We're really stretching. Um, I 
Let's see, there's a wound section to these sheets that you made for us. There are, I did not make these. Okay. Um, we're using a, a set of homebrew rules by, uh, called Darker Dungeons um, by a creator that goes by Gliffy Gifts, and they are awesome. Look up Darker Dungeons on Reddit, whatever. It's, it's all good stuff. They have custom character sheets. We're abusing all this, and uh, it's been really fun. And um, tune in next week where we critique their uh, thing oh, now yeah. that we've been playing it. We're going to talk about hard mode rules next week after yeah. this, a little wrap-up sesh. Um, so you have a wound on your head cool, and your chest. Cool, cool. They can um, be burns or scratches or whatever you like to. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like a probably a combination of the two. I imagine, especially knowing it's a head wound, uh, Andrew probably, she has, like, singed hair, yeah. I think, at this point. Like, okay, I love it. had to cut a chunk of it off. Um, in okay. order to, to deal with that. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. And you are already so, wounded. We talked about yours. I had a cracked rib. I went down. And okay, we'll see what happens. She died. Dove, yeah, dove into a pit of lava. Well, you have a lot a of wounds then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have a wound called death. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The whole, Your entire body is, is that in lava. lava. Is that a permanent injury? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so we're playing also since it's such a difficult game mode. And, well, it's supposed to be, although this is the first character death we had in seven se or six sessions because I'm a nice GM. Um, so we all have one fate point. Our character can resist death magically once in some way that we make up in the narrative. And spoilers, we have done just so, um, which we will get to. Right now, although we're going to skip ahead real quick and I don't want to play with the travel and stuff too much, I kind of do want to do the scene just after the fight as like an intense like flashback for all of us. Yeah. So what just happened is the firebird like falls into lava, kind of like explosion of flame from below, like a pillar of lava kind of flows up and, and sinks back down. And the heat washes over everyone. And you manage to like, Kanaima's really the- I'm the only one that's conscious. You're yeah. the only one conscious. Yeah. So like you manage to get Andre awake and you manage to get Tangle awake I'm for like- slapping them. You don't need to write this down or anything, but for like intents and purposes, you probably have like one HP and be like just up. And- Wake up! W what, what Get happened? up! <laughs> Where's so well tied? You two don't know. So yeah, Kanaima, you have to explain what happened. She just did the bird and then did, did, did the thing and then they fell and then it's not She's gone! What? She's well Tide is in... She's in the lava! I think she's dead. Really? She saved us, but she's gone. I, she, I saw her fall. As you, like, look over the, the side of this, like, walkway you're on, you see the lava still bubbling, like, where they would have gone down. Is there any sign of them at all? It's just, like... There's not, the but it's still bubbling, like, quite intently. Like it's not slowing down or stopping. Hmm. The, she's. Are you are you sure? Are you sure nothing, yeah, nothing else her happened? Yeah, I saw go all the way down. I mean, she did like a spell to like stop the bird from blowing up and killing everybody. Shit. Okay. Shit. Fuck. Okay. It's bubbling still. I don't know. Let Let's grab. Let's grab it. Let's Let's go. Let's go. What is Andrew's plan? Well, just get the fuck out of here. I don't know. Just, um, just grab every. Let's let's just fucking go. What do we do about well tied? You said she's gone. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's still bubbling. What if she's? Are you like, gonna Are you gonna dive in there? I mean, I can't. I'm <laughs> not fireproof. <laughs> Cats are not fireproof. No. Let's, let's just let's just grab anything and fucking go. Tangle. Mm. Uh, while you two are arguing, I'm solemnly like getting out supplies from my bag and like getting out like uh, like herbs and incense and stuff, and I'm gonna try to like perform some sort of funeral rite. Um, okay, as you're getting this out, um, you see some of those like kind of fireworm caterpillars that you faced earlier, like going into the lava, heading towards the bubbles from like the sides of the cavern and stuff. The worms. And you see like four or five of them going down there. Oh my God. Are there more fucking creatures around here <laughs> after all worms! this? Worms! Save well time! <laughs> She's fuck she fucking died. What? I don't know anything can happen. I almost died in the desert. <laughs> yeah, this is you, you, your body still existed though. It didn't just disappear Maybe and well, Ty is magma proof. We don't know. 
Um, I lo- some crazy stuff. Andrew looks over to the lava to see if there's any time, any sign of a body emerging. Or any- um, you do notice that like there is on like the closest shore, like kind of close to the entrance you guys came in. Um, yeah, you notice that the the worms that went in are like pushing something out of the lava. Uh, you can get down there if you like. Like it's. Yeah, I'm gonna set, Obviously set my stuff down and, f- and swoop it over and see what's going on. Uh, yeah, how, how how did it happen? How did? Well, I, I think she's doing like some kind of like that that frosty spell or something to stop the bird because the bird was like going, oh, I'm gonna be blown. <laughs> yes. Yes, like, that's. Chill, everybody, chill, and then, mm-hmm. and then, like it's like I was there. Yeah, it was a tackle. <laughs> so it, the bird, the, the bird tackled well tied. Everyone tackled each other. I want Kanaima to like, like I don't know, host a sports network. Like so general and vague. Oh my like, god. <laughs> <laughs> like almost like no information's being given to but, like, you. Like a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. yeah, like all the heart that you could hear. Um, yeah, when you get down there, it seems like they're taking like what looks like like a, a person-sized block or, of like hardened magma <gasps> of like black stone. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I immediately call out to the others. Like, get down here. This may be her body. All the flies yeah. over as well. Yeah, Alda oh, is uh, away from Tangle. Yeah. Yeah. How could one eat? We left Alda with me. How yeah. could one eat at this time, anyways? So Tangle. I mean, not, uh, Alda's I probably safe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna I, take my water over. skin and like unscrew it and try to like pour it over the magma to like cool it or something. Okay. Yeah. As it's like. It like kind of does that hiss of, of water touching something extremely hot, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm gonna say like you notice it start to crack a bit. Okay, um, I'm also praying. Of course. In Aarakocra. Of course. Yeah. How else would you? Yeah. That was how you were raised. Yeah. Um, Although I was like looking back and forth, like kind of confused. Like. <laughs> um, as you guys are are looking at this and kind of trying to figure this out, um, you remember that flame spirit you talked to in the mirrors that uh, well tied connected with and like kind of prove themselves to really well. Um, they kind of like appear in, in the pool of fire, like you see their little eyes appear and it talks to you in, in telepathy again and it's very brief and it's like, I did what I could. Um, they'll need to see a healer immediately and you need to return them to the source of their own power. Um, before what I've done wears off. And that's what it tells you. What, what, what does that mean? Is she all right? You, the spirit tells you she will be if you hurry. We have to take her back to the water bear temple, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I will empty my water skin onto it as well to try to cool it off. Pour one out for the homies. As you do, the the rock like kind of cracks and starts to crumble, and not like a in a like a gentle way, and it reveals that like yes, well tied is inside, and not really like I don't know, looks like in some kind of coma or stasis. Um, yeah. Oh my god. Pr- uh, praise praise Sekra. We gotta get her out of here. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's where you find Well Tide, and that's how you find Well Tide. And uh, this means you're rushing back to Volto's Crossing to her home water shrine, I'm guessing. Uh, when you bring them there, uh, Niavara, the, one of the head water bearers there, um, looks really concerned, but is like very professional, like down, to, like kind of in that mode where you know, where something bad is happening and you just like adrenaline kind of kicks in. You're like, okay, I've got this. And they like get some people to take her into the temple. They set her down in like one of their pools of water and stuff that they have in there. And she thanks you and she's like, I'm gonna do whatever I can um, to help Well Tide recover. And we're gonna use all the, like everything we have at our disposal. Um, She thanks you for bringing her there and she says I will like if you need to see her again come in I don't know how long this will take but 
Do you understand what's happening right now? Um, Have she, you ever seen anything like this before? She looks at you and she's just like, I understand that Welltide needs our help right now and is, is close to death from what Medical I can tell. History. She tackled a bird into a lava pit. Um, she also had that parasite crawling on her. I don't know if you need to remove any other <laughs> things. No, it's, it's fine. If anyone has mites, it's probably the bird. Yeah. No, we cl- groom That's ourselves. a stereotype, I'm sorry. We <laughs> That's the kind of negative stereotype I don't want to perpetuate about Eric. Our beaks are the perfect shape for picking insects out. What about on your back? Uh, Anyways. We can do a pretty good swivel. Also, I mean, can Ima can help? <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, I, one of the water bearers comes up to Niavara as you're talking to uh, with the scroll case that Wildtide had on them, which is like all their belongings seem to be still intact, like they're still okay, like preserved. Um, and yeah, they have like kind of opened that up and they're showing Niavara and like, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but... Um, this was found on their body and is very interesting. They look like old, like, fire druid relics of some kind. And she, like, kind of takes them and examines them. And she's just, like, very thoughtful about it. And she's like, I don't know what this means but right now, but, like, we're going to do everything we can to save her. Hmm. Good. Cool and good. Have we given them the orbs or anything like that? Like no. the rocks? Yeah. The stones? The stones, yeah, yeah. No, I don't, no. Th- I don't think so. As far as I know now. Do um, uh, you know what kind of stone it is? Group, group huddle quickly. Um, yeah. Should we should we give the water bearers the stones? Um, Do Are we keeping them ourselves? Mm. I don't trust. I don't think I we're mean, responsible I, enough to. The thing is, like, are they going to, like, stop? Fenora, if they like show up here and then, you know. Do we need the stones to stop Fenora, or do we just track her down and beat her up ourselves? She's gonna like take them. Then. We need to keep them out of her hands. Yeah. That's true, but like, are we just gonna keep it at our houses? Uh, I'll keep it on my person. Yeah, I'll I'll carry them. You you'll have both of them, or we'll we split them up, or how are we? Maybe split them so she like steals something from one of us. She didn't get both of them. Uh, okay, sure, okay. Uh, all right, all right, that's the plan. I just wanted to make sure if we were handing them over or not, uh, what I kind guess. What stone is the second one? We uh, don't know anything about these stones. This is why I, I, I don't know if we're qualified. Is there like a fire inside of it? I'm pretty sure actually, it's the earth stone. No, actually, it's, uh, the markings are, uh, water. <gasps> it's our theory! The opposite stones were in the opposite places. Remember that this stone wasn't found in the nest itself. It was found thrown against one of the pillars or one of the walls, and it had scorch marks around it as if it was tried to be destroyed or it was, like, disliked by the fire elemental. Mm. As if the fire elemental didn't like it. They put them in the reverse. Someone put them in the wrong spot. So we need to bring them back to where they belong. The, there was also that, well, I don't know, Tavin? He, he wanted the water stone Travin, specifically yeah. to, I don't know. Yeah. If, well, if, Was Travin here? Where did we leave Travin? Travin's in Valto's Crossing now, I think. Because you brought, you brought Travin to the water shrine to work with them more instead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See there? Um, See? It's pretty late at night right now. So, um, I don't care. Wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're not sure he's probably sleeping like most people. Wake up, Travis! <laughs> Listen, bitch. Um, <laughs> we got mysteries to solve. Um, but talking to them is something you can do in your downtime for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Niavara tells you that to please feel free to come in and like familiar faces might help. Who knows? Um, you might not be able to spend a lot of time here depending on how the healers are doing and what they're doing. They'll know best what. Well, tight scenes are. Woo! Um, with that, I'd like to jump forward a bit. Um, we're going to spend a week in Valto's Crossing because in our campaign, a long rest is a week, and some people need it mm-hmm. badly. Mm-hmm. So um, we're going to take it. And also, Well Tide needs time to heal. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry, Well Tide, but your long rest will be resting. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? We'll go into it a little bit, actually, too. But um, I want to do a quick loot sale of some of your stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, last we checked, uh, 
you had 58 gold in your kind of account mm -hmm. as a group. Mm -hmm. um, the three chalices you managed to bring back, you can cross off. They're worth 50 each. Ooh. Nice. Bringing you to 208 gold pieces. Awesome. So you've got a pretty hefty kind of uh, thing going on here. And then you also found a magic ring while you mm -hmm. were doing stuff. You found a magic sword that is just plus one damage and plus one to attacks that Kanaima is using because mm -hmm. they are limited in their magic damage. Mm -hmm. You also, as a party, find the, you examine the ring and figure out it's a ring of jumping. Ooh. So while wearing the ring, you can cast the jump spell as a bonus action at will, but only targeting yourself. Um, jump triples your jump distance for one minute, which Ooh. makes you pretty much able to jump most things. Um, it requires attunement to use, um, so you only have three attuned items at once. Um, I'm not sure if your sword requires attunement. I assume it might, Maybe. but I'll find out for season two. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody wants it more than anybody else, or... Oh boy, I like how it I, so far! It's <laughs> definitely wasted on me, so... Yeah, uh, I've, I mean, I kind of, I know you already got a sword, but like, it kind of seems like a bit of, like, it'd be good for you, I maybe. I jump, like, so far! Yeah, being able to move around jump really like fast sounds good. It, I was thinking, like, I mean... Triple you jumped us. I don't know. Yeah, maybe one of you two, if, like, yeah. in case you need to be, like, a... An ambulance? Mm. I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's well, triples your jump? What's, what's jump actually do mechanically? Um, the spell triples your jump distance for one minute. So okay. like um, jump your, your long jump, I believe, whatever. is about your strength score and feet. Okay. Um, and then your high jump, if you do, like they're both for running jumps. I believe your long jump is your strength score. Okay. So if you have a, like a strength score of 12, you could jump 36 feet across mm -hmm. something, which like a 35 foot jump is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then height is one plus strength mod. How do I know all this? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So you, for most of you, it'll be about three feet. So you could jump nine feet up mm -hmm. and then reach like a 10 foot I ledge. Mean, I, I kind of like the idea of giving it to Kanaima because- My strength is shit though. Mm -hmm. What's your strength? I, like I have mod of like zero. What's your score, 10? 10, yeah. That's still 30 feet of jumping. I guess, yeah. While and these two are talking about it, I'm going to put it on and be like, hey guys, watch this. <laughs> you can fly! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I jump up really high and then just well, don't descend. Okay, I'm just going to tell you, you jump up six feet in the air, which is really high, before you have to fly. <laughs> so you jump up as tall as, like, yourself, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like the idea, like, you could jump on the backs of things and attack them. Yeah. Like flying yeah. things. You could jump at flying things if yeah. you have this. Because I have no ranged weapons. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, okay. bring a jump in. I'm gonna jump all over the place, gonna jump around. <laughs> jump up, jump up. I and love, yeah. just wanna say I love a party that's not like everyone has to have one magic item uh -huh. individually because like yeah, they are like spread them around. Uh -huh. They're a party resource. Who could use them best, you know? Mm -hmm. Um all right, I uh, to live comfortably, we discussed that you care for your family, so you pay full. Even mm -hmm. though you own a house, you yeah. pay full. Yeah. Um, it's 15 gold each. Um, you don't have to pay. But I'm just going to take it out the group vault of that school. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So take off 45. And um, is that 15 times 3? Yes, it is. Um, so you all start at OK for all your, ex your thirst, hunger, and energy. Mm -hmm. And... And don't argue about drinking more water and stuff. It's just the rules. We're going to go for it. <laughs> and you start at full health. You start at full, or you start at uh, however many hit dice you recovered. Um, yeah. And uh, we're going to also talk about uh, what you're going to do for the week. Um, other than check in on Well Tide and mm -hmm. be cool. Um, at the end of the week, for each injury you have, you're going to roll a constitution uh, check. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you rest for the week and do nothing but rest, you can roll with advantage. So if you really want to recover from injuries, rest for the week and do nothing. You and could also, yeah. And what does the injury do, like mechanically? Yeah. Um, if it's not, if it's patched up, nothing. If it's not patched up, it's a level of exhaustion. Okay, so presumably mine is patched up? Yeah, I'm going to say they're all patched up for now. Okay. Um, does anyone, how much healing kit do you have left uh, for Andre? Um, I actually have, I think, all of it. I don't know if we spent any of the, okay. the healing kit. Um, no, I, I spent one, so I've got four left. So it's going to be to get you guys home and cover the three injuries. I'm not mm -hmm. going to count Welltide's because Welltide is extremely injured mm -hmm. and uh, 
saved by the fire magic. Put a, I put a single band-aid on well tights. <laughs> but it will cost you three uses of that kit. Okay, sounds Which great. Which you can refill yeah, yeah. on whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna say they're not going into yours to grab it because that's kind. Fair. Yeah. Let's just loot the uh, maybe corpse for band-aids first. <laughs> um, it's your last good act. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, so if you get critted with an attack, they reopen. Mm. And then cause exhaustion again. And it's mm. one level of exhaustion per injury. And re if we succeed on these rolls, they go they away? They just go away permanently, yeah. Cool. You recover. Injuries are like small term, short term things. Last maybe mm. a week or a month or two or whatever, mm -hmm. depending on how you roll. Anyways, you can rest to get a better chance at doing that. You can look for an exotic item. You can craft something, um, like you can craft healing potions if you like, because you have a healer, uh, sorry, an herbalism kit. Mm. Um, you can do pit fighting, <laughs> like Konaim has done in the past. You can do some gambling. You can just do work. Um, those are all options for our main thing, so think about that. What's, what's this exotic item option? Like, you could try and buy a magic item. Mm -hmm. It's a little pricey. It costs like 100 gold and takes you the week to find a seller that's mm. selling a random item that right. I could roll on, and then you have to buy the item. Wouldn't so like, it be that character that we talked to in the first game? They would find you a magic item seller. No um. one in Volto's Crossing like sells magic items regularly. Mm. Magic items are rare artifacts, and they're in collections usually, or in the wild. Mm. Okay. And is it... Uh like, do we choose from a list, or how does that work? No, I, like, I would re literally, I would roll a random magic item from a random table. You would roll charisma to see how good of a seller you made, and the better you roll, the better the item could be. Oh. And then, like, I tell you what's available, and then give you the price of it on top of the 100 gold you spent to find it. And if you want to buy it, you know that person and can buy that item. Hmm. But, okay. like... Like a hundred just to find. Yeah, them. magic items are not supposed to be bought, so that's their concession. You can mm -hmm. buy them; it's just a lot of investment. So maybe mm -hmm. like it's better for higher levels of gold. Yeah, it's a good gold sink for higher in the campaign, which okay. right now you don't really need. I mean, regular items will go over too. Like you can buy those on top of doing one of these things. Okay, uh, another party huddle. Mm -hmm. I could conceivably spend mine doing that, and then depending on what we get, we can figure out who it's best. for on or whatever because I have super high you charisma. You can also craft potions. True. Which are magic items that are pretty cheap for you. Yeah. Oh, I'm just, like, I have a lot of charisma so I'm like, maybe we uh, could get the good table or whatever. That's mm -hmm. fair. Yeah, but then, like, how much? You only got 200 in the vault, so how if it costs you more than 100 thing? for the item, too. It could be, like, it hundreds would... of gold. Yeah. I don't know. It's if... like 500 gold. I... It's a really good item. Be really what if it saves your life and that gold couldn't? Uh, Talking about saving your life, um, mm -hmm. Gold. If you Galaxy. spent, <laughs> if you spent a hundred gold, you could craft in this week four potions of healing <gasps> or that. one potion of greater healing. <gasps> uh, I think we should craft some potions. I, I think that seems potions. smarter. It's yeah. twenty-five gold a piece for the potion, but you have to spend your week potion making. I'm, you know what? I'm into it. I'm gonna do yeah, because having one potion for each of us mm -hmm. in a pinch, yeah, we go. or you know. Three of us, <laughs> maybe <Shh>. four. <laughs> don't don't talk that way. <laughs> wow, that was out of character. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. one fifty three left in the vault. Yeah, so I'm going to spend vault money and I'm going to craft a potion for all of us. Mm -hmm. And while I'm potion crafting, while I'm in my room and things are brewing, I want to do an extra little thing. This is just a character thing. Yeah, talk about it. Um. When I, I go back to the uh, water temple and grab, like, I assume there was, like, some amount of the, like, lava casing on Welltide still. You could have grabbed some from, like, the temple, too. Like okay. Like, the fire temple. Yeah, I want to grab, like... I'm going to say you did. Okay. I want to grab, like, a big chunk of it, and then while I'm, my potions are brewing and I have, like, some downtime or whatever, I'm going to make each of us a little, like, necklace, like, a pendant out carved out of the... Magma oh. rock. With like a little chunk of it on it? Yeah. Oh. Like is it like a sculpture or just like a like a stone? Like what you're wearing almost? Um. Oh, originally it was just a stone, but now I, <laughs> maybe it's a sculpture. Maybe it's a... Maybe it's like a little flame? Yeah, either a little flame or... <laughs> I was thinking I, Tango would try to like carve each of the people. Like no, a mini no one's wearing that. It's no. a penis. <laughs> <laughs> My, sorry, are you making three or four of them? Four, like one for each <laughs> okay, of us. Good. I have, does anyone have a healing potion already? No, I use mine. Like, do you have a card at all? I have a card. Okay, so I'm just going to give you each a card. Yeah. And Jace, Ooh. you can just add that you have however many to your inventory. Okay. They take up a whole slot. Okay, I didn't, well, I had crossed off the last one I used, but now it's uncrossed. Okay, cool. Um, 
Ooh, it tastes of cinnamon and orange. Really? That's what Does it mine says. taste differently? No, they all say the same thing. I'm sorry. I'm retconning it. Mine <laughs> tastes different. Okay, great. <laughs> it's berries and uh, mud. And <laughs> what? Mud. No. Mud. Just go. Can you use different ingredients for your own potion? <laughs> yeah. Give the same to everyone. Far less effective. Yeah. Yeah. It tastes like bird seed. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Okay, what? seed and berries. Gross. That's not gross. That's amazing. Oh, groundlings. I can't even <laughs> you people. Okay. Um, can I mention Andrew? Do you have any thoughts about what you want to spend your week doing? Um, you can also just work for money. You can, like, find honest work in town. Andrew, Andrew's honestly going to just spend most of the week, like, resting up at her place. Like, I imagine we see her, like... Spend time with family, bandaged too. Bandaged on, on her head and on her chest, sort of, like... I'm picturing, like, once the initial worry of your siblings is over, this is kind of like you're in your stressy house, and yeah. they're, like, running kind of wild, but yeah. you're, like, unable to, like, get up and deal with all of them, yes, so you're just kind of yelling. 100%, yes. Each one, like, runs around breaking something, yeah. and you're like, ah! Yeah, yeah, and Andrew's just like, God, 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 God damn it, she got... Stop doing that. I'm stressed <laughs> up over here. Oh, for those who don't know, Andrew has eight siblings yeah. that uh, they take care of on their own. Do you do this all the time when I'm not here? Like, is this what the the default state is? <laughs> <laughs> well, we clean when you're coming back sometimes. You know, like, they didn't, though. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't know. It's hard to tell. Yes, uh, it's hard to tell when you're coming back. And uh, and uh, Andrew would visit Well Tide, like, a yeah. few times over the course of all this. And just exactly. sort of looks over and... Um, probably mutters under her breath a little bit about being, you're, you're fucking stupid. What do you think you're trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> like angry with all Yeah, angry. Just be like, what, what do you sacrifice? think you were yeah. trying to yeah, do? Yeah, absolutely. Anger, anger, grief. Yeah, yeah. Anger, grief's real. Yeah. Like um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do you like when you visit Well Tide? Because he didn't do that and I want to do that before we move on to Kanaima. Um, it's mostly prayer. Like, I'm like kneeling beside the bed. Uh, a lot of like, Thank you for your sacrifice. Like I understand, kind of the, like the desire to like you know do something heroic and sacrifice you yourself feel? to save people or whatever. Uh, grateful and guilty. Ooh, because it's you she saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm there every day, like praying and offering to help the water bears as much as I can. And uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, all that doesn't leave well tied oh, side. Oh, okay. absolutely not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yavara's like got a liking to what, to Elda as well. Mm -hmm. She can tell it's a good bond. Mm -hmm. Elda's helping in the pool with you. Uh, um, What's Kanaima doing? Um, hmm. I know, well, right? Well, I mean, Kanaima's also going to like visit, but I think. You could, like, spread rumors, work, uh, research something, like, try and find info on something. You could gamble, pit fight. You could just rest, you know, whatever you like. You don't have to do anything either. I think Kanaima is going to take this ring out and uh, do some some gambling. I bet entering in some jumping competition. <laughs> <sighs> Pretty competitive, the, hey, the underground buddy. jumping competition. Yeah. Jump I'm so slow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're gonna make three rolls. The first is gonna be a dexterity acrobatics with advantage from your jumping ring. Yay. So that's gonna be the first roll. You're looking to get a 15 on any of these. Okay, dexterity acrobatics. All right. Well, this is my dex is plus three. And then acrobatics and proficiency. So that's another three. But yeah. with advantage. So with advantage? Oh, yeah, so yeah. you're adding yeah, six so in total again. and you have advantage. Okay, so nice. What's the second one? Four. So what's God. your best one? Um, I think it would be, it was from the, a nine from one and roll. then, yeah. one was it a nine? Nine plus six? Yeah. That makes it, 15's what you want. So you're good, even with the yeah. roll of a nine, rogues. Well, I mean, like, we're cheating at this jumping competition. Yeah, yeah right? Sure. Which is why you're going to make a charisma deception check. Ooh. Ooh. Not with advantage. Cool. Uh, let's... That's a 
12, and my charisma is a plus two. So we're at 14. Do you have deception? deception. Yep. You do? Okay, yeah. so you've got deception. Um, <laughs> the third roll. I want to know like who your rival's in the jumping boat. <laughs> just, just random people? <laughs> Um, and I think just like endurance wise, I'm gonna get you to make, uh, oh, will it be constitution? Yeah, it's gonna be constitution. If you okay. have athletics, you can add proficiency, but if not, it's just constitution. Yeah, I have athletics. You do? Yeah. Okay, so you can add con and proficiency. Okay, cool. Oh, that's rogue. So 10 plus two for con plus three. So 15. Okay. Yeah. How much money do you have on you? Um, I think I have 50. From the chalice. <laughs> and I, oh, I added the chalice. Oh, you added the the thing? Box, so. uh, okay, um, then I have nothing. No, but like, <laughs> how much is everyone comfortable giving Kanaima to bet? Oh, I was gonna take as much as I needed to buy that magic item, so I'm fine with whatever. I mean, if she, if I you're if see. you're if you're checking in with people, it'll be one. If you just take money from the <laughs> <laughs> you brought the chalice gonna... and you're like, listen, I can get more money from this chalice. I'm gonna say you bet the fifty from the chalice because yeah. we should have discussed that before. Would you like to have like fifty for the chalice right now, or do you want me to turn it into more money? It's it's a good investment. I'm just saying it's guaranteed to pay off. It, it, no one's gonna challenge you in a jumping competition. Yeah, That's I'm not... pretty small, I'm unassuming. What if they think I can't jump? You know what, Kanima? I accept. Excellent. The jumping challenge. Let's do it! <laughs> at the, I, at, I jump and I just, <laughs> I just start flying around and I, from the sky I yell, you are bad at jumping. <laughs> Joke's on you, Kanaima got three successes, Kanaima brings home double the money. Okay. Wait. So, y'all get an extra 50 gold. Yay! Um, there, was, there was like some noble somewhere who was like, I can jump the highest. <laughs> I mean, I'm the gold. best jumper in all the land. There's also the endurance to do these jumping contests, and there's also the deception element, which Kanaima did not get caught. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, these are all good roles. I mean, Kanaima pulled off all aspects of this kind of gambling slash criminal activity. Was this a heist? I mean... Um, <laughs> I feel like Kanaima has these crazy side adventures. Yeah. Yeah. Between, like, I would feel like Kanaima has like, these parties that no one else does. <laughs> yeah. um, so you get 50 gold. Do you want it all for yourself, all for the vault, or half and half? I'll do half and half. Cool. So 25 in the vault, 25 for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Sweet, so now you don't have no zero gold. You have 25 yeah, gold. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so glad downtime exists. Every time I'm like, I don't know what to do with this, and then... It's great. I love Kanaima downtime. always brings it. Because I get to like just do like, stupid shit in town. Just yeah. like <laughs> go and enter into a pit fight, you know, get, start a jumping contest. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to go visit Well Tide as well. Well tied, as you do this, and we discuss a little bit beforehand what we want to do, um, what saved you was basically like a combination of the fire spirit that you befriended and that deemed you worthy of being like a flame song druid and having the same temperance as them and having the same like patience in the face of extreme emotion as them, which is something they cultivate in practice. Um, between that and the scrolls you had on you and the residual like history of those, um, it combined to kind of save your life by, I guess like basically infusing you with a bit of the power of the old Flamesong Druids, mm -hmm. which is great because you live, but uh, it's a little different because now you're gonna come back and not be, you're gonna have a little bit of the Flamesong Druids in you too, which means that some of your water powers are gonna fall away and you become, uh, basically, if you're watching at home, we're doing a cool little circle of the land uh, combo, or like homebrew, where we're gonna make up spell lists that are half water, half fire. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, would you like to explain, like I don't have solid stuff because I know you had a lot of creative ideas. How would you like the week to go by for you in your head? Oh man, wait, I had to have my moment. Yeah, 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 yeah I didn't get the Kanaima moment. Cause I was, I oh. like, was gonna also visit Well Tide. Sorry, yes, yeah. <laughs> please tell me, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> 
I get too carried away. Yeah. So uh, can I was gonna go to the like I guess is is like well tied like in the like what the pool? Like, um, a, they have like or... a separate like some separate yeah. pools around too, mm -hmm. and sh like she's in one with a few druids like around her. Yeah. So like, can I was gonna go and like sit like next to the pool and just be like, why do you have to go and be a hero, man? This is just like Water Song and Franklin all over again. You better Aww. wake up, girl. Girl, <laughs> you better wake up. Kanaim has lost too many people before. Man, I'm, I'm like running out of space in this tiny locket for the people I've lost. <laughs> so you better get up, because I don't have place for another picture. Ah. Uh, and then I like... I like put like like my hand in the water and I was like, by the power of my soothing bees. <laughs> <laughs> Better get up, girl. Alda's also very happy to see you. Yay. Yeah. Hey. Happy to see an old friend. Hey, Alda. Don't let Tangle eat you. <laughs> <laughs> just, you just stay right, buddy. Alda like chirps in like, <laughs> a affirming manner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So, um, yeah. How do you kind of want this to play out? What do you have in mind for this? Do you have anything specific or? Just in terms of like, how, how do you, come yeah. back? Well, or... how do you perceive your week as well? Like in your kind of coma? Oh yeah. Um, because it's like also probably like not super solid as a perception. It might just be like things coming and going or brief memories or like small images. Yeah. Like feel free to be creative with it. And, uh, like how does this, this kind of magic saving you manifest in your head. Yeah, so uh, for Welltide, uh, she actually, um, I don't know if I want to say, like, speak as though I'm not Welltide or I am Welltide yeah. while I'm describing it, but uh, basically the experience that I'll be having is, like, I kind of wake up in a, like, an area that looks familiar but unfamiliar and like it kind of reminds me of like the volcano that we were in and like there's like a lot of winding halls and stuff like that and it's essentially like almost kind of going through like this trial that like flame song druids would go through some sort of mm. this like on like another plane um so this is kind of happening in the head a little bit but there's like other rooms of like mirrors and like fire and part of it is like seeing fragments of like my past and being confronted with like hard truths as well as uh, a little bit of the history of like the flame song druids and like stuff that seems to be like a little bit maybe like important in the world but like kind of confusing like just cryptic mm. messages and then also just seeing like like little like like glimmers of like my friends as well so like i'd like see something about tangle a little bit here or about kanaima and uh andri like almost walking in in and out of like weird like memories kind of very dreamlike in the whole like this. yeah mm -hmm. um there's a as part of the trials um and i think it's going to play in really well because you're learning two new spells um, as part of your like circle land always prepared spells. So one of the trials is like really easy for you and comes as second nature. And it's basically taking that distillation of like just being able to calm yourself through that anger that you guys all went through in the mirror area. And it's like taking that a step further with magic and being able to like calm your soul so much that you can project protection from like fire and ice and elements in the physical world and literally being able to re like resist the most powerful physical things as well as most powerful emotional things which gives you the protection from energy spell which is kind of awesome um the worst part of the training for you is this like repeated drill you remember that you were doing in your dream where someone would come at you with a sword made out of fire and you were had you just had to defend yourself and they were like relentless and when they knocked you down you had to get up and do it again and again and again and you like did not want to hurt this person or be the one knocking them down too mm -hmm. but it teaches like a very specific lesson from the flame song druids that although like calmness and that like inner like stillness is super important too there are times you have to act which gives you the flame sword spell or flame blade 
I really like this. I, yeah. I, if that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. You just gave me like a really good inspiration. The person that I see doing that is someone from my past, very specific. Yes, okay. But they're in like flame song druid robes yeah. for some reason, but like they're representing as like that specific. An old rival or someone that's like hurt you in the past, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I like that. I get what you're putting down too. That would be really good. So you do now have the power to summon a blade of flame. And Welltide traditionally in our game has been very pacifist. Um, but yeah, what they've tried to instill on in you is there are times you have to act and there are times you have to use like force to get stuff done mm -hmm. and defend yourself and fight for causes worth fighting for. So now you have that power. You can choose to use it in the real world. Yeah. We'll see if you do. Like I'm super excited for a dramatic moment where you maybe have to use flame blade at some Just point. Like, so yeah, because I think that will be pretty badass. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's really good for druids because it's a melee attack that uses your spell casting modifier too. So yeah you can melee fight with uh, a really good uh, attack bonus. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, at the end of that week, um, Niavara does manage to like resurrect you um, and, and like you do like slowly kind of come back and she calls everyone back. How is Welltide different now? Oh yeah, so Welltide physically is gonna be a little bit different as well. Before her hair was just like a bunch of blues and teals. Now most of it is like white Ooh. with like streaks of teal through the hair. And then you can probably see like maybe like a, some almost like reddish hues in there, like a little bit buried in, in with it as well. But cool. I, all, all on like a white face, yeah. And like okay. eyes are kind of just like a steely gray. Yeah. Oh, cool. wow. Oh, my God. I really like this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, are, are we doing like the yeah, same? Yeah, sure. Like, Go ahead. Like, Ooh, sorry. So how do we, yeah, how do we meet you? Or? There's one actually other detail I forgot as well. Um, do you want to introduce me or should I like you go, go for oh, no okay. yeah you can do this you, how do you wake up you let me know I like this okay um, so I was like in this like pool of water yeah. and uh, we can see that some of the healers are still by me and then it looks like my, my body almost still kind of looks like lifeless in a way at first you don't see those physical changes all at once but like right away and then a flash of kind of like just a bright quick like light and it just kind of looks like some rolling flames. Ooh. Um, just kind of mixing with the water and some like mist as well, just like flash over Baltide's body. And when she looked lifeless before, all of a sudden she's just kind of like standing again. And, um, you know, because was soaking in this stuff, she's probably got, you know, less clothing on yeah. and stuff. So you can kind of see a little bit more of like her chest and her collarbones. You just notice the hair, but there's also like a flame tattoo that kind of just goes across here and kind of meets the water tattoo a little bit on the sides Ooh, of the neck. Cool. And they like kind of weave together like where they meet. Nice. I love it. Yeah. Sick. Cool. Yeah. I mean like Niavar is the first to like be there. It, like rushes over when she hears you've awoken and stuff and is like nearby and like sends someone out to get all of you and you know I, it's like you know it's, it's early in the morning and you guys are taken to the water shrine to see well tide and say hi. So yeah, I'm guessing they have you like on a bench somewhere, like sitting down, like resting, and Yavara mm -hmm. brings you all to well tide. And how do you react? Well tide's awake, well tide's eyes are open, she's talking. You're alive! <laughs> like, yes! You did it! <laughs> I believed in you! I knew you would all make it, and like well tide just like shoots up with like energy and like tries to get everyone in a big hug, like, Aww. immediately, yeah. like, yeah. I've missed you so much. Group hug! Yeah. Andrew, Andrew just, like, pulls back, and he's just like, don't do that again. Don't, that was, that was stupid back there. Don't do that, I don't, we, it had to be one of us. And if, if it's, if it's gonna have to be someone, I'm okay to make that, that call. But let's, let's not get there next time. Yeah. Yeah, what's that? Just, I'm, so, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry I made you worry, Andrew. Like, well, Ty you, puts you like a hand on Andrew and she's like, I know, I know it's hard for you too. You, you were reckless back there, okay? Don't, don't treat your own life so, so goddamn lightly, okay? Yeah, you're important. 
We, You're we, the we, best of us. We, we are, oh. We're we're going on this whole thing with these stones and all this. You think we're gonna keep that going? With you're not. You're the one who's driving all this. Also, you're making us not be murder hobos. <laughs> <laughs> I I know that you like all of you would do well with without me too. Like I can't I can't lose any of you, but I, I would do terrible things. I honestly I think we all make each other better, and I'm gonna I'll do my best to not like not let you all down. I think you give too much of yourself, okay? Just don't. Do you see how high I can jump? <laughs> you can jump higher now? Yeah! I got a sick ring! And I can jump real high now. I want some money from <laughs> jumping, and it's pretty cool. Show me, show me. I jump really high. <laughs> <laughs> I jump really high. Yes, can I jump six feet in the air? I jump really high. Oh Are we using it at zero? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's like three, three feet, feet in the air. <laughs> it's still I jump really far. Like How many of us really can long. jump three feet in the air, though? I mean, like, one yeah, right. foot of jumping's yeah. difficult. True. Yeah. True. Like, for height? Like, I don't know. <laughs> to get your feet like, off the, the ground? Luigi jump. <laughs> like, yes. your legs are, like, going. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Also, through this, I, I'd say that, like, Welltide probably has, like, some happy tears in her eyes and Aww. stuff. She's, like, you know, crying a little bit, really happy to see everybody. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I kind of wait for, like, the other two to get their piece in first or whatever. Um, and, yeah, then I, I go up to you and just kind of, like, look you in the eye and, like, talon, like, claw hand on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, very sincerely, like, like, thank you, my friend. And, like, Welltide's holding that, like, claw hand and it's just, like... You're worth it. Don't let anyone tell you different. Alda hides from Aww. you a bit. <laughs> yeah, like Alda. Um, Alda still. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Once, once the to to break the dramatic tension, I'll be like, I didn't eat your worm while you were asleep. I can tell. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> my, my debt is repaid. <laughs> <laughs> No, I could have. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like even now, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just joking. But like, at any point, I could have eaten that worm. Yeah. It was defenseless. <laughs> you saved a life. I saved a life. <laughs> <laughs> what happens next is uh, on you. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh my god! I can't. Okay, okay. Um, uh, I want to. <laughs> I'm giving everyone their necklace. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> so I explain what it's made from, and I uh, hand one out to everyone. I'll even, like, you know, put it around their necks and everything. Yeah. What yeah. do they look like again? Because yeah. um, there was some debate about there how penis shape they were. <laughs> you know what? Do you want, like, little, like... It's gonna be chunks of rock are cute. It, it's going to be, like, the firebird, like, the form the fire elemental took. Oh, okay. Oh. So that it reminds... It's a penis! Look, there's the ball. <laughs> there, yeah, it's a penis. How can you see a penis? It's this? very, it's very lovely. It's very you, you know. <laughs> Do you have any tools? Look at the details on the wings. Uh, there's yeah, clearly you, you included the ball hair. Oh Do you have any um, proficiencies <laughs> with like tools that would help you make these? I don't know. Well, like, what, what are, are we looking at? Dex herbal or herbalism kit you have? Okay, so you just have decks and you don't have tools. Um, uh, I also I, well, I'm going to use guidance on myself when I make them. So well, I was going to say you don't have the proper tools to even make them. So I don't know what you homebrewed in your little den too, but they might not be the nicest quality. Is that okay? It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be a disadvantaged dex roll, but you can add the d4. Okay. And just roll the d4. This is for like the how, d4 once, the d20 twice. This like is if, for just how beautifully they're crafted. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is permanent. What's the lowest? Eleven. 11. So 13, 13 plus one for 14? Yeah, 14. Oh, they're not bad. I was gonna say under 10 was probably like really shoddy and like above like 15 or higher was probably really nice. There's but the, the, it, like a clear bird form. Yeah, it's, not it's like kind of like geometric and like sharp and yeah. it's not like super nicely carved, but it's like, it's, it's really yeah. sharp penis. Do cat penises look like birds? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, <you know. laughs> it's a variety. You yeah. confuse me, Kanaima. I, I do that to a lot of people. <laughs> Confuse that guy that be a jumping contest. <laughs> Confuse him out of 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> right out of $50. Well, we, cut well, to, we cut to this wealthy individual being like, I don't understand. I was so good at jumping. <laughs> <laughs> I was the best in my school. 
<laughs> the jumping school. My jumping school. <laughs> jumping school. Yeah. Um, oh, and also the health potions, too. Oh, yes. Yeah, necklaces first for sentimental and then uh, a health potion for I everyone. I brewed you all these. I brewed you all these. Oh, well, yeah. is going to cry, like, oh. receiving oh. it. Just, oh. And, like, think tangle and, like, hug. But, like, literally just, like... I'm gonna keep this on me, like always. Oh. Welcome like, to like use it if you're dying. No. <laughs> Welcome to hardcore D and D, where we uh, have hardcore emotions. <laughs> you spend one hour talking and crying. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't keep it on you always. If you are dying, use the potion. Put it in your face hole. Great. I think she meant the necklace. <laughs> I mean, I thought Both. it was a potion, but I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll get the potion. People get really emotional about healing potions. Yeah. I can't wait till we cut to uh, well died, like drinking the healing potion and crying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, did you want to go for a name change too? Because I know you had some creative options. Oh yeah, sure. What? Did do you remember what they down? were? I will pull them up while we do this next thing. Cool. Um, I'm going to get everyone to, uh, including you, um, to roll a saving, or sorry, a con check. So just add con for, mm -hmm. not you, Kanima, for your wounds. Mm -hmm. um, and I have advantage from resting. So yeah, JC, you go first. We'll go around the table. Can I guidance this? Nope. And is this a. This is a con check. Cover. Just roll a d20, add your con, you need a 15. It's not likely, I know. No. Okay. That's why resting is, is solid. But like, honestly, it will be fine. It's still yeah. hatched. Can I favor of the stars this? What's favor of the stars say? It's Add 2d4 to a failed save or attack once per rest. Mm, per long rest? Short. Oh. No, it's a human. Short or long, I'm, so. I don't think so. It's more like a saving. Like, I don't know. It's not a save. It's a the other thing. What does it say you can add to? A ability. failed save or attack. Oh. It is just like a standard ability check, but it does share a lot in, in common with like a saving throw because um, mm -hmm. it's healing. But I'm going to say no just because it's natural healing and I you can't really control it. Like It's not like you took a, a, a minute to heal. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like this is just an average to see how your, heal, your body healed over the week and yeah. you will heal cool, cool. over time. Um, let's make two with advantage for mm -hmm. Josh. Boop. For um, Andrew. That's five. So seven. <laughs> But really, um, that's two, so okay. So the four. first one doesn't heal. Yeah. Um, um, and then roll another one with advantage. Oh. For one for each. Yeah. Like so. See what I mean? Oh, uh, that's good. Um, that one's about seventeen. That's probably that. Well, that's of course yeah. gonna work then. That one is also two. <laughs> wow. Okay. So we're getting the bad rolls out right now, which yeah. is really good. Um, and do you want to roll one as well with advantage? Sure. And. I was injured before I died, so do I have two injuries or? No, I'm just no. gonna keep one. Oh, just I don't know. One. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna keep it simple. And sorry, see, sorry, Julie. Do I erase the injury then if I succeeded on that yeah. one? Okay. Yeah, cool. it's all gone. And advantage or yep. regular? Oh, okay, you rested cool. the week. You didn't get to do downtime. Cool. Uh, yeah, I won't make it. Nope, not at all. No. Nope. Um, Good so thing it was with advantage. Unless a one doesn't mean I die from my injuries. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go back to being dead. You get a second injury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where is the you name die changes? Again. Yeah. <laughs> you had um, you had in mind the names Brightstream or Ember Tide, but we mm. don't have to change your name either. Ooh, mm. it's funny because I remembered I didn't remember either of those, and I do like them. I was like, maybe I'll do Bright Tide, but so Ember Tide and, and Brightstream. Brightstream. But you could also do Bright Tide. That's kind of like on yeah. like. Yeah. Does, does anybody have a favorite? Because if not, I will roll for it. I like keeping tied in. There's yeah, some, keeping yeah. some element of your. So you want to roll for Ember or Bright? Ember or Bright? Okay. So um, yeah. one to three is Ember. Four to six is Bright. Okay. Let's do. Yeah, I guess this is like the most in between these two. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wait, wait. Do you want like? Oh a yeah. Half purple half red. This is one? perfect. Thank you. Yeah, Thematic. Okay. Half blue, half red. So. What was it that we said? Do I need to re-roll? Ember was first. Bright was second. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so bright tide. Bright tide. Yay. All right. Pass me that die. So um, I will. You communicate that your new name <laughs> that the fire song monks chose for you is bright tide, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, that, or that you it's, believe it's they bright tide. You. Yeah. Like someone, maybe at some point someone says like, well, tide again. I'm like, it's actually bright tide now. This is, uh, this is how I have to come back. This is me now. Man, you spent a week in a pool and you come back with a different name. 
Jesus. Yeah. I've got um, a, I've got there's a, a changing. <laughs> <laughs> I have to balance both sides of me now. Ah. Yeah, I'll just be like, welcome back, Bright Tide. Um, Niavara too, is like with you, and you kind of know this is coming a bit because you don't feel like you're torn between two different things, and you know that like you now have a purpose that's probably a lot bigger than these individual organizations. Mm -hmm. And Niavara, like not in a cruel way at all, is kind of like gives you a speech about how you are not a water bearer anymore because you're something more, and I'll like you have been a great water bearer druid and she would want to have you here helping at the temple for the rest of time if she could. But like, clearly there's something else you have to do and whatever your purpose is with this new power, like that's for you to discover. And I'm not, like I won't let your responsibilities to us and your ties to us hold you back from that and keep you here or, or cause you any remorse. So with great sadness, like I welcome you to your new phase of life. And yeah, I'm like, I'm just gonna like be very understanding. Like, having gone through that trial, like, yeah. knows that this this is like a knowing thing. Like, I'm not shocked at all or anything about it. But um, I am definitely gonna give like Niavara like a really big warm embrace and say like, thank you for everything you've done for me, uh, for you know bringing me up from nothing. I'm like never going to forget it and I'm still oh. going to be like of service here. I have responsibilities to the world, but like that includes here as well. So like should there be something that needs to involve the water bearer druids, uh again, I will be here to help with that. Well, she like gives you a very like warm embrace and tells you, you know, you will always have friends here and this does not mean you're not welcome here. Like you will always, you know, we'll always consider you one of our own, even though like your responsibilities might lie elsewhere and don't be afraid. Like she just kind of says, don't be worried if it comes down to it that you can't be here for us. We know how to, you know us, we take care of ourselves. We, we are strong people and we know that you have other things to worry about as well now. So yeah. Um, before I part as well, I just kind of, through like some of that wisdom, I just kind of say there may become there may come a time that I may need some help from the water bears to help bring the world back into balance. Oh yeah, she definitely like meets your eyes for that one and nods. Okay, she's down yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. Niavara likes fighting the power. Nice. Um, all we have left from our long rest to do is we check those. Um, Oh, um, gear stock ups. Mm -hmm. You wanted Ooh. to increase your die one size for arrows? Uh, yeah, yeah. 20 yeah. silver. Cool, I can do that. Cool. I take it out of the vault, but it's in flat gold right now, and I don't want to do math. Well, you're um, gonna ask Well Tide something. Uh, bright Tide. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Bright Tide. Ask Bright something. Sick hair! <laughs> you think I can, like, pull off, like, uh, like some frosted tips or something? You know, like, you think I should do something with my hair? <laughs> I think you'd look, you look great as you are, but I think you'd look yeah. great any way you want to be. You know, there. express yourself. I would look great any way I want to be. Okay, cool. What has Andre done with their hair? Not a um, good section of it's burnt off. Andre, Andre Maybe like shaved sides? Like a chunk of it, yeah. It's essentially like shaved off. Uh, it's kind of like, oh, get a little oh, Natalie it. Dormer going on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Andre looks like, super punk now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Except cool. it's like not, you know, it's like, it's curly, like, because it's like yeah. this fluffy, like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. thing going off. Um, I like that. Yeah, it's still a bit bandaged. Actually, if, if if we're coming to the end of the, like, rest period, I want to do, like, a, can I narrate, like, just, like, a really quick scene? Yeah, um, absolutely. I just, I just like, imagine somewhere over the course of it, there's, like, a moment of, like, Andri at her home, and um, she's had her, like, siblings, like, draw up a bath for her, like, in which, like, I think was, like, spent a little bit of money to, like, do that Aww. as part of, like her her like healing process um and there's just like a scene of her like removing the bandages that have been like around her head and like removing the bandages that have been like around her like chest and like um removing and so she's like she mostly keeps her arms mm. covered but she removes like the bandages that are on there and we're seeing like burn scars on her arms burn scars on her chest and like burn she's got new burn scars now on like on her the side of her head a little bit now too oh. and she like you know she she takes a moment to just like look at herself in the mirror just like kind of kind of sad for a bit and then 
goes goes and like washes herself and tries to heal and then she puts the bandages back on her arms and back on like around her head and then she puts on like the various necklaces and charms that she carries to various gods like including like most prominently the the big sacra necklace but then mm. she also puts on the the necklace that tangle had made with the little mm. thing and then she like heads off i love it it's an amazing moment ah! <laughs> i love our character so, so much bad. um ah so natalie dormer hair is what yeah. i'm saying i'm so yeah. happy <laughs> um we were talking about healing kits. How many uses do you each have? One left. Um, I'd like to restock. I think I haven't used any of them. You haven't used any of your healing kit? Because I've just been like good burying people, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's a gold per use, so I'm just going to cash you out for four gold from the vault so you Sounds can good. fill yours up to five. Great. Um, how yeah. much of my like herbalism kit did I use to brew those potions? You don't use it up. Oh. Um, oh, but you do. I did charge you for the potions. It was a hundred. Oh yeah, you did already that. charge me for that. So you just pay for supplies. Never mind. Um, I just need to refill food and water skins. Um, that will be done with your room and board. So I already subtracted the five gold each. So you all have full uh, water and uh, food. Um, cool and good. We bought gear. Uh, blah blah blah. Ooh, one other thing. Yeah. I'm gonna go to Kanaima and use minor illusion to turn your hair to like, I don't know, something like Bright Tides to be like, is this what you want? Sick! Do I look cool? You look like a penis. Wow. Wow. Mm, Patty. <laughs> A little, I, uh, a little steal, bird humor. I steal Tangle's sketchbook and I drop penises <laughs> all over it. Yeah. <laughs> this one's a penis and this one's a penis. That was a this really is a good. <laughs> Majora penis. Um. Wow. I can't, how long have you been sitting on that? Like since the hair joke? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Since there's all this drama, you're like, oh, I can't wait to tell Kanai my team that he looks like a penis. <laughs> we have very different yes. vibes on these sides yeah. of the table. So. <laughs> oh, this is team comedy and team drama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Gotta have balance in the flow. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay, I, before we go on to more stuff, I want to give you three rumors on your long rest. Mm -hmm. um, so here's three maybe useful rumors of varying usefulness. Um, first of all, you've like from keeping her to the ground, talking to people, you've definitely heard that uh, Venora is on the move to Shaba. Oh. And as soon as you're like rested and well, like you have some time to rest, but like who told us that? Um, I'm gonna say uh, Riza, like after you like debriefed with her, the tavern owner of the alcove. Um, Wait, I thought it was Nana who owned that place. No, Nana's like a regular customer. Nana is like what? an aging old Aarakocra that you just, just drinks there all the time. I... <laughs> yeah, Riza's the one that runs it. She's the older venture. Tangle, not I all have... Aarakocra have all the power. Oh like... my goddess. <laughs> I have fully believed Nana. Both me as a player and Tangle as a character have thought Nana owns that place and have interested Interacted with does. Nana under that like pretext. Maybe she is secretly the owner of the alcove. That's Maybe she funds the whole so thing. Much. I guess so. Maybe Riza runs it. You've all assumed Riza run owns it too, but who knows? I've like you thanked her for like the room. I've like given her feedback on shit. <laughs> I've talked to her like daily. She probably listens to Paul. Like, be fresher now. Yeah. <laughs> and she probably like agrees with you on all of it and like talks to you about it too, but like you think it's as like someone who's gonna do something about it, but she's just another complaining person. <laughs> oh my god. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Is this like when you go into a store and ask someone who you think yeah. works there no. where something is, and they're like, I don't work here. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I need you to know, like, yeah, Riza definitely gives her cheap drinks to keep making you believe that. Oh. So that you don't complain to her directly. <gasps> oh! <laughs> like, 100%, okay. if Riza's overheard this or seen it, she is like, oh, please. I don't want this shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that place of Anora is moving. Is that is that where you're that from? That is Handel's yes. hometown. Oh, cool. um, yeah. Where your mom lives. <laughs> <laughs> that is where that is. Oh, You've heard another rumor about Venora. 
Um, it's that apparently uh, out in the desert and stuff, her acolytes or herself and her like travelers do not receive any trouble from the ivory blades, suspiciously so. Like the ivory blades are a bandit gang that um, mm -hmm. cause a lot of trouble for a lot of caravans, a lot of traders and a lot of merchants and a lot of travelers in general, mm -hmm. but they specifically do not cause Venora a lot of trouble. Hmm. So you have like a cause to believe that possibly there's some agreement or something there, which is well, not great. We thought mm -hmm. the ivory blades might have been behind that first murder that started this all off. Right? No, that was the red sashes. That was thing. the red sashes. Was it? Well, it, no, it was um, the no, ivory the, blades. It was yeah, ugly. it was a piece they of have red a fabric. Red sash. Mm -hmm. That was oh. yeah. The red sashes are a gang yeah, in, in, uh, in, the in our dark, in the dark, which game. you yeah. also play with me. Okay. Um, well, it's all blurring together. Great game, though. Yeah. <laughs> the third rumor, um, which you're all like, it's a, it's a kind of joke of the town and the talk of the town right now, is that uh, there's like merchants from like some far off place of the east that brought the smelliest produce to trade, and apparently it's like a delicacy, but it's just they caravans some of smelly, yeah. smelly produce that no one can stand in town. Hmm. But apparently it's like something special that people are buying and stuff like that. So, hmm. And it's just like everyone is joking and talking about that this week. Wow. Let's those investigate are... all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, those are small rumors you've heard. You did some activities. We settled up. You healed some wounds. We calculated all our finances. Oh, my God, we have long rested. That feels so good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so proud of all of you. Mm -hmm. Yay. I want to flash back a little bit too. During this week, mm -hmm. um, especially like in the last few days, uh, some really interesting travelers came to town that you all noticed, and they wanted to set up a like they wanted to talk with you and agreed to meet at the alcove. Us uh, specifically? Um, yes. Interesting. And they agreed to meet at the alcove today, uh, which is convenient because like well tides back up and can join you. Mm -hmm. uh, but they came to town like a day or two ago. It's a. Uh, a group of four dwarves. And like they definitely caused a stir when they came into town because dwarves are very isolationalist and do not often like come to above ground cities. And uh, specifically, they came to the alcove looking for you guys. Um, you were introduced to uh, Tulsha, um, who is a, I don't know, middle-aged dwarf, non-binary, wears a lot of like dwarves of underground in cooler temperatures. They wear too many clothes for this desert and are sweating a lot and are tired and look sunburnt from travel and like they do not know how to deal with the desert at all. And dwarves too, to protect their eyesight, they have these like kind of large like plaque-like masks on their eyes that have slits for their eyes to see through so that sunlight doesn't affect them as much. Um, so anyways, dwarves are very, very like out of place in Valto's Crossing, which is a lot of people who don't have such pale skin and are not wearing crazy amounts of clothing and weird masks. Um, Can so, I ask a question? Yeah, please. When they were going around town asking after us, how did they refer to us? Um, so they went... Heroes. They went <laughs> right to... The, are there gods among them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just walk around. They went right to the alcove uh -huh. and they were asking about uh, a group and it looks like... Um, I was gonna just say, like, it looks like you might have a reputation of being, well, what have you actually saved, though? I was gonna say the Heroes of Alto's Crossing, but, like, most of your deeds have been, like, kind of off the radar. It's um, me, I'm, it's me they're looking for. Huh? No, because they, well, they told folk tales about that, like, first tower that we went to, and it was, like, some infamous place in yeah, the, the neighborhood you're right. or whatever. Yeah, so rumors and, like, are kind of going around. You know, we went there, and we, like, freed some amazing elemental creature. Also, what's-her-face, the, like, celestial thing that we, like... Silvara? Silvara also, like, was in Volto's Crossing for a while, so, like, I don't know, maybe there was something with that, too. Yeah, maybe. The... Word has spread. Okay. Also, also the fire garage. temple was the favorite temple of that one yeah. merchant that I talked to that one time. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so I guess they're looking for a group of adventurers. Yeah. And, you know, the orcs see the future. They for sure know that we're heroes, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cause, cause got it from the they've already yeah. watched season two. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, they come looking for you. Um and they know that you've, like, just through, like, when you're, they, they kind of know that you have been looking for elemental stones. Um, and they tell you about Venora and, like, what you kind of already know is that, like, Venora left from the 
dwarven cities to and stole one of the stolen stones from their archives and a bunch of information about them and is now looking for the remaining ones and they're looking for her trying to stop her and they are looking for any leads and they caught wind of your adventures and where you were going specifically and put some stuff together and uh, went to Baltus Crossing to find you. Well, so did you you all know Venora? Can you tell us about her? Because we only know a little bit. Like, it, like, what is she trying to do exactly? Um, Talsha's like at the table at the alcove that afternoon with you uh, and takes a long sip of ale and they're just like, let out this exhausted sigh and uh, yeah, they kind of admit that they don't know a lot. Um, Venora's young and was a young upstart arcanist, uh, worked in the archives, really smart. Uh, they said that they have cause to believe they got involved with some people who might have been part of some kind of cult or organization in secret. Um, and that when, they, when she found all the information on these stones, she not only made sure first to remove these sources from the archives, either for her own like for her own information, but also possibly to prevent more people from finding out um, about them, but then stole and ran off with using a lot of destructive magic. Uh, one of the stones they had. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. One of the stones they had. Implying yes. they had more than one? No, um, they had only one. It's oh. a stone of fire. Oh. Oh. Do you know how many stones there are in total? Is it? Yes, there's four. Four? Okay. That much we do know. Um, do you know I'm, what their purpose is? That's the part we don't have the right resource to put together. Um, what we know is they're ancient. they extremely old, and we don't know why they were created. And also, we don't know what they do, because that relic has been inert in our archives forever and doesn't show much. Like, no one's been able to really crack that. Um, but what we do know is that if... It's a nerd on its own. Maybe they work together, and we don't want that to be a thing that happens. Hmm. Um, yeah, so they're trying to find out their purpose as well, and they're trying to find out uh, like what Venora's plot is, and they've also caught rumor that they're going to Shava and want to go there as well, but they knew that you would all have something to do with this too. Hmm. Well, we can travel together, I guess. <coughs> yeah, we can go together, maybe stop... Stop Venora from taking yeah. that last stone. Like, I, does Venora have a head start on us at this point? Like, um, I, Talsha like uh, signals to one of their uh, one of the dwarves traveling with them, and they lay out like kind of a map on the table, and they like take their like really like kind of short stubby fingers, and they're like they're pointing across, and they're like there is a way to get there possibly quicker. Um, and there's like a dwarven tunnel that uh, will cut a lot, like cut a day off our journey. Um, okay. If we go through Grex Passage, uh, we'll, we might have a chance of getting there first, or at least at the same time. I think we should do that. Wait, if Venora's a dwarf, wouldn't she know about this passage as well? Quite possibly, but we have a lot of dwarven patrols underground, ah, so okay. I don't think she would risk it. Tangle's not gonna like this. I would rather take this guy. We need to get there before them so that we can protect your family. Yeah, your home's at stake. Yeah, your mom! And maybe my mom. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. I um, could. I mean, if we raced, I would beat you there regardless, but. I can jump pretty far now. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> um, I could go and let them know of our coming and have the village prepare for us. Just by herself? Yeah. What if you get, like, I don't know, attacked by another big bird? I'm very fast. Like a bigger bird. Uh, Do I have my giant vulture stat block? Uh, never <laughs> mind. Um, how giant are they? What if you get attacked by a crocodile? With wings. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> we already killed one of those. That was so I like off. how much we're all thinking well, about it. Well, defeated. All right, well, all right. A giant vulture is larger than you. Oh, dang. Did we um, defeat, or did she just it's not decide faster. to stop attacking us? She just decided to stop. Yeah. Hmm. Um, anyways, I... Tulsha wants to leave at the crack of dawn tomorrow morning. Like, just a bit right. before daylight. Did Tulsha 
and the yeah. other dwarves take their uh, masks off? No, they just kind of like lift them up onto their like head and hair, and like it's just like hilarious because like they have like sunburnt faces, but like white across their eyes because mm -hmm. they block out the sun. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm um, picturing like the visors of the mole people from like Marvel comics. Yeah, kind of, like... there's something in there too. Yeah, there's a lot of little places going around here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they are not used to this shit. Okay, I mean, I like, like facial readings. Do I get a sense that these people are like honest and I can trust them? Because like, yeah. Oh, yeah, Shava is like pretty guarded and not generally like a place where outsiders are. Yeah, you go like it's barely even accessible. I think Talsha so would like even like flyers. look to you and kind of make the point of we know that Shava is not an accessible or welcoming place to outsiders and we do not want to step on any kind of sacred traditions that your people hold dear. We just want to help. So if you have any restrictions about where we can go or what we can do there, please let us know. But we are going to do everything we can to stop Venora. And your like your cooperation with that, mm -hmm. and if you can get your people's cooperation with that as well, would be so helpful to this cause. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can I do a quick insight check on him? Yeah, do you want to see if uh, Tulsha's like trustworthy and stuff? Yeah, 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 if she's on the level about this uh, stopping like Venora this thing. Um, eight plus six. Can I, um, can I guidance you? No, I don't think that you'd want that obvious you're doing it. Um, so I got eight 14. Plus six is 14, that's pretty good. Um, Um, they are like, as far as you can tell, they are trustworthy. They seem like, they seem like kind of earnest. They are to the point and they are pretty serious. Um, but you get that they are very worried about this and almost in the way that like, it's a bit of a blow to dwarven pride mm -hmm. to have this get out and to have someone from their city do yeah. this. To the point, serious and very worried is like Andrew's favorite mode. So like she trusts this. <laughs> yeah, actually, like you probably respect this person the most. Yes. Because yes. okay. they are like to the point and yeah. they are like yeah. working themselves hard to, to do this. Well, I sort of I look to you <laughs> yeah. to like I sort of look to you as the like for whether like I like I trust your judgment. So like whether or not you give me the, like, go ahead and trust them. Mm -hmm. Andrew, Andrew just gives you a nod. Okay. Like, yeah. Um, I say, okay, you are permitted to enter the village. Um, there are a few places you must never go. And I'll tell them about, like, the yeah. uh, sacred air temple. And I, I say, it's sealed. No one is allowed inside. Do not ever go there. Uh, do not enter, enter the, Moon. like, temple of the elders without permission and escort. Moonsong temple is Moonsong temple, called. yeah. And, and, like, do not enter the uh, rookery, like, nest or whatever where the, young, like, the younglings are born, oh. blah, blah, blah. I'm just, like, rattling off places. And in there, I'm also going to throw out my own home. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're entering there. No. <laughs> yeah, we're going. Well, we're going right in. We're go I'm going to go right in there. Um... I'm gonna talk to your mom. What did you do with the stones too? Do you have them with the show, or did you leave them with the water shrine, or I do not did you show keep them. them on your cells? No, what did, what yeah, did you we decided we're, we're keeping them keeping on. Them we're on keeping them, them. Yeah. and I'm still being very like I'm extremely cagey about them, and I think that like basically anyone outside of the four of us is not to be trusted. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you tell Tolsha if she if they ask about them? Sorry, I say no. That like you don't have them. I will try to insinuate that as long as I can, yeah. Yeah, because, like, Tulsha's probably going to ask about, um, they'll ask about the, like, you know, we know you went to the Temple of Lost Souls and mm -hmm. to the Halls of Nizra, and we know that those, like, we have, we have reason to believe that's where two of the stones are. Did you find anything? Will definitely be, like, what they asked the group. Yeah, I'm just going to say uh, we did and they are safe. We have ensured that they won't fall into Venora's hands. Okay. They won't also. press the topic. Like, I found a cool sword. I found a cool ring. I can jump pretty good now. I've seen it. It's it yeah. is impressive yeah. for a <laughs> motion to two legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if <laughs> you know what I mean? Stretches wings. One of the other dwarves is like, maybe I can jump higher, and then it's all just like, no, we don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Tulsha wants to leave th right the next day. Is there anything you want to do before an early night in or, and I'll assume like you prep for the journey and stuff. I look over across the room and I say, Nana, please treat our friends to the finest room you have. <laughs> <laughs> 
great. Um, and Bright Tide's just going to like. He's got thumbs up. <laughs> it's just going to affirm like these like new friends. Just like, don't worry. Like we're going to help you find Minor and put a stop to this like and this. like restore balance to the world. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Andrew goes home and instructs her siblings in the normal protocol for uh, <laughs> hoping maybe this time it will work. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Would, would we say that like uh, Bright Tide now kind of almost has like a bit of a connection to some of the stones? Like, would mm. sense the water one and maybe sense the fire one when we get close to it as well? Hmm. You, I don't know if I don't think you feel anything particularly special that other people don't. Okay. Um, right now. One thing I did want to do during downtime, I think I sort of... Go ahead. Um, I do want to, like, investigate them and try to, like, I don't know, uh, what's the word, attune to them? Yeah, anything? like, you can't get anything out of them. They seem completely inert on their own. But they did react to each other when I was, like, locating the second one with the first one. And your, your gut kind of says that having four of them would do something. Okay. And, like, but, like, like putting many, them together, yeah. nothing? Yeah, I'm not keeping any secrets from you. Okay. They're not working with just two. Okay. All right. So um, in the middle of the night, you're woken up uh, when, when once you go to bed, and uh, Riza kind of wakes you up if you're staying at the alcove. Um, and uh, someone is like sends someone to go sends Nana to go get you. Okay. And why not? They're a regular. They're a friend. So wait, Riza um, comes and wakes me. Yeah, and, and I'm ex I'm like, what are you doing here? Does Nana know you're here? <laughs> <laughs> they are not like they they say that there's trouble at the water shrine and you need to go immediately. Um, oh. and they need you. Uh, something's happened. Okay, so, like I'm awake for this. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm just. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I'm going. I'm guessing this is a call to action to just like run there. Yeah, um, I'll like jump out the window and fly there like, as super fast. Yeah. Um, oh, um, I might shape change to get there fast as well. Yeah, into what? Fastest movement speed. Uh, yeah, hyena, I think. Yeah. Yeah, a hyena yeah. bolting through the streets. Yeah, you can use a wild shape, and we'll start this off as a hyena. Andrew, Andrew throws on her chain shirt and just starts running through the through the streets. All right. Um, Same. <laughs> you see, I uh, like bunny hopping, like jumping all the way <laughs> on rooftops. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you can parkour now. <laughs> the spirit of vengeance. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this lies outside of town, like by a little bit, but it's easy to get there just with like in a few minutes. You've all got ways. <laughs> um, and what you see is there's a few like caravans parked outside the shrine, and uh, as you all arrive and all get there. Um, it looks like there are some of those people wearing the same robes as that assassin was that was after Travin. Mm -hmm. um, some disciples. Who we befriended. Of, <laughs> yeah, who you may have friend, but it's not that person. It is like other people you don't recognize. Um, but yeah, they're at the entrance of the shrine. One of them walks out and they've got uh, Niavara like secured and they're holding, them, holding her hostage. Um, and that is a scene that you walk into. Um, and that, with that, we'll take like a little five minute break and we'll come back and we'll deal with these people that are attacking the water shrine. We'll befriend them too. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, Tide's gonna have a new change of, uh, see how this new uh, attitude goes um, when most precious things are threatened. Um, anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Joy is back in five minutes. We're gonna be right back here. If you're watching on YouTube, this may be the end of the first part of this episode, so keep on going. If you're here for Twitch, just keep watching. See you in five. Mm.